Austin. Great comfort and factory direct savings from Big Sur Water Beds, America's largest. 430 Coliseum West, just west of the Glenbrook Mall. A candid discussion about women loving women on the next Maury. America just can't seem to get enough of Princess Diana. You're looking at 200 of the 4 million readers who picked up the issue of People magazine, which broke the royal story. And ever since, the rumors have been spreading and people are asking themselves, what really happened behind the palace walls? Today, we have the exclusive on the very latest developments on this story. Stay with us. <laughs> Her eating problems started at school. Her schoolmates told me that she used to gorge herself and have four, five, Give and me some six of helpings of breakfast. Of school then mates, hold on, let me Colin. finish. Let me finish, please. Give me a name or two let instead of finish. a vague generalization. Let, let me finish. Oh, uh, and go on. Give me will, a name. Will you shut up, you little worm? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And over the last few weeks. We've been hearing what we call in America rumors. Princess Diana has bulimia. Princess Diana is suicidal. Prince Charles is cheating on Princess Diana. And the worst of all, they may be getting a divorce. Now, what is real and what's rumor? A couple of weeks ago, I went to London to find out what was really going on. In fact, many of you may have watched the special that I was lucky enough to be able to host on Princess Di, it aired Friday night on the Fox Network. Today, for the first time, we've brought together the three royal authors. Actually, they're not royal, but they're authors on royalty. Their books are so hot that stores all over the country can't keep them on the shelves. All three books say very different things about Diana. Andrew Morton, whose book is number one on the bestseller list right now, wrote that Diana had five suicide attempts. But Lady Colin Campbell, whose book is also a bestseller, says the suicide attempts are nothing but rubbish. And finally, a newly published book by Nicholas Davis that just went on the bestseller list states that Diana is uh, no angel. She too may have what I will tactfully call outside interests, hot stuff. We'll talk with those authors later, but first let's talk with Andrew Morton. He's joining us via satellite from London. Andrew, your book, Diana, Her True Story, has been number one in this country for four weeks now and number one in Europe. Ain't bad. Your book is called Her True Story. All right, did Princess Diana want you to write this book? Well, lots of people think that. What I've done is sp spoken to as many people surrounding her as possible. I've spoken to her family. I've spoken to her friends. I've spoken to everyone that I could think of. And really, it, there was no great conspiracy behind it, Sally. I just started to investigate what the real Diana was like, to try, for example, if you will, to explain the enigma of this woman who adorns the cover of all the magazines in the world, of People magazine and so on, but very little is known about. Now, what were your sources for the book? I spoke to her brother, uh, the present Earl Spencer. Her father, uh, the, the late Earl Spencer, provided photographs for the book. I spoke to her best friends, people like Carolyn Bartholomew. I spoke to people like her old boyfriends, like James Gilby, who is still in touch with her now. I spoke to her counsellors, people like Stephen Twigg, and, and uh, even her astrologer. Have you heard back what the royal family feels about you? <laughs> well, I think they've reserved a room for me in the tower, a permanent room <laughs> with its own chains on the wall. Um, the royal family themselves seems, seem to be distancing themselves from the Princess of Wales, and we've seen that in, a, in various little events over the last few weeks. And I think that's an ominous sign, because you would expect the royal family to uh, try and go for some kind of reconciliation between Charles and Diana, especially after the Duchess of York has, has left and you've still got the morass of Princess Anne's marriage collapsing, but not so. They didn't close ranks. Let's talk about Diana's suicide attempts. Tell me about that. Well, just a year after this uncomplicated, jolly, lively girl who was enjoying life in central London in, an, in a bachelor apartment with her friends, she was standing on the steps at Sandringham House, the Queen's winter home, preparing to throw herself down. She was then pregnant with Prince William. That was the first attempt, and it was 
really a, a cry of desperation from a woman who is in a lonely position, a despairing position, and since then she's made numerous other, what I've called in the book, cries for help, where she's slashed herself with a razor blade, cut herself with a lemon slicer, even thrown herself against a glass cabinet. Some of them sound ludicrous, such as when she picked up a penknife from Prince Charles's study desk and just slashed her chest and her thighs with it. Her sister Jane saw her shortly afterwards and commented on the, on the marks. They were very much desperate cries for help, please help me, please guide me. They weren't deliberate attempts to take her own life. What triggered the cries for help? I think it's a, a number of things. Prince Charles's continual fascination with another woman, Camilla Parker Bowles. The fact that the bulimia nervosa, this eating disorder of binging and vomiting, which has affected her for most of her royal life, had right royally set in with her at that time. And uh, the flip side of bulimia is this what's known as the cutting syndrome, where you try and hurt yourself because whilst you're all smiles in public there's rage and despair and anger underneath and that's that's another part of it the other and uh, the way she saw it through her eyes was prince charles's uncaring attitude towards her the fact that he seemed to have done little to change his bachelor habits even though he was now married to her andrew you're a serious journalist are you concerned that some of the claims you made about princess diana will damage your reputation I think that my reputation stands or falls by the authenticity of this book and the reputation of Princess Diana's friends stands or falls by the authenticity of this book and it's quite significant that several of them have spoken out and stood by their statements and I'm thinking specifically of James Gilby who spoke about the suicides I'm thinking of Caroline Bartholomew who spoke about the bulimia and it's also significant that the Princess of Wales has actually visited them or spoken to them on the telephone since this book's been published so she's standing by her friends and I'm standing by them let's go to that bulimia for a moment did uh, she have the uh, eating disorder when she was having her children Yes, indeed. She's had it almost from the moment she joined the royal family, from her honeymoon all the way through, almost to the present day. It's under control now, but it's certainly part of what she calls the dark ages of her royal life, where she was just, when, and when you think about it, just going from day to day, being sick four or five, five times a day, raiding the fridge, the refrigerator at Highgrove or at Kensington Palace or even at Windsor Castle. On one occasion, she was in the bowels of Windsor Castle, raiding a refrigerator and, and was sitting there eating a steak and kidney pie when she was surprised by a footman. Now, all this kind of behaviour breeds guilt, it breeds a kind of hopelessness, a kind of a very low sense of self-esteem. And so here we have this woman who in public was all smiles, but in private was going through hell. Why do you think your book has been a bestseller in America? I think it's because it's really touched a nerve in the, in the national and the international psyche. Because here for the first time is a woman who has been the royal equivalent to Marlena Dietrich. She's been an enigma. She's been a puzzle. People have not known anything about her really. And it, what has been known has been surrounded by gossip and innuendo. This book, because of the fact that her friends have spoken out about, about her life, because her brother's spoken out about her early, early years, has this ring of authenticity about it. And also, it's a very sympathetic account of a woman who really was a girl who became a princess before she became a woman, and a woman who we see today who's gone through an awful lot in her life. Andrew, were you the first to talk about uh, Prince Charles and Camilla? There's been all kinds of speculation about Prince Charles's friendships with people like Camilla Parker Bowles, uh, Kanga Tryon, an another married lady. But certainly, I think I was the first to talk about it in a consistent way and then put it as a thread all the way through Diana's marriage. And certainly, her shadow has lingered long, both over her courtship and also her marriage. And certainly, as far as Diana's friends are concerned, Prince Charles' friendship with Camilla Parker Bowles has been the cancer which has eaten at the heart of Diana's happiness. When we come back, we'll talk to the other authors who have also written books about Princess Diana, and they have very different things to say. We'll be right back. I'm afraid I cannot agree for one moment that uh, Diana tried to suicide five times, particularly with a lemon peeler. I mean, how on earth do you go about it? She tried to peel herself to death. Yeah. <laughs> slice mean, by slice her skin. 
If you're tired of hunting for your vacuum cleaner's attachments, get the new Dirt Devil Upright. It's lightweight, easy to use, and all the attachments are built right into the vacuum. So you can clean everything from floor to ceiling and edge to edge without stopping to find a thing. And because it's a Dirt Devil, it's packed with plenty of cleaning power. So stop hunting for your attachments. Get the new Dirt Devil Upright, the all-in-one cleaner that cleans it all. Let's talk about TVs. Not one of those old mother-in-law doesn't want them anymore. Gee, thanks. Snow on the screen, knobs falling off, rabbit ears, tinfoil on the antenna. Reception only gets better if you hold it like this kind of TV? No, I mean a real TV. Like you can get it your Get It Today store. RTO rent to own. RTO's got this remote control color portable for only $7.99 a week. Get it today, $7.99. Look us up in the white pages under RTO. Huge selection, top name brands, and low, low prices. It's the ultimate savings sale at Value City. $1.8 million closeout. Young men's famous maker, denim coordinates, not $50 to $60. Your choice, $19.99. $900,000 closeout. Young men's famous label sportswear, not $35 to $44. Only $12.99 to $16.99. And men's designer sport and dress shirts, not $30 to $50. Your choice, $9.99. You'll find it all during the ultimate savings sale at all Value City department stores. As a secretarial student at ITT Tech, your daughter will be involved in much more than just typing. The hard disk contains the operating system and the subdirectory files for the software needed in an office environment. That instructor certainly knew what she was talking about. Instructor? Oh, that was one of our students. Find out more about ITT Technical Institute. Call now for this brochure. 1-800-942-0088. We are talking about what some are, called, are calling the royal mess that uh, could be the marriage between Princess Diana and Prince Charles. Meet Lady Colin Campbell. She is the author of a book, Diana in Private, The Princess Nobody Knows. Now, for the last month, all we've been hearing about is the stressful marriage between Charles and Diana. In fact, we've been hearing that Diana tried to kill herself on more than one occasion. Do you agree with that? If so, yes. If not, why? No, she certainly didn't. No? Uh, I was fed these stories starting about last year, October, and I looked into them, and I think every responsible writer has a duty to check out the material they're given and stand it up. And if it's true, you go with it, and if it's not, you discard it. And I checked out these stories and realized that it was a, an absolute load of bull to be dead blunt about it all. Now, uh, wait a minute. You're, you called something an absolute load of bull. Andrew, answer Lady Campbell, I think it's been called bull, but not you. No, I think that the reason why Diana, her true story, is number one on the bestsellers list is because it's demonstrably authentic. That are you that alleging there? Are you alleging, Wait, Andrew, let me introduce Nicholas are Davies, you alleging, the author Andrew, of Diana, that members of the Spencer family told you that Diana had attempted suicide? No, I'm not. I cannot agree for one moment that uh, Diana tried to suicide five times, particularly with a lemon peeler. I mean, how on earth do you go about it? She tried to peel herself to death. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, slice by slice her skin. And with Lady Colin Campbell's and, book? And with, with Lady Colin Campbell's book, I, I'm afraid that the book, to a great de degree, has been dismissed. Uh, in Britain by many of the royal watchers. I mean, for example, I mean, her contention uh, that Diana uh, went out of her way and, and bagged, as, as it was described, Prince Charles into marriage. I mean, just not on at all. I well, mean, Prince not, Charles was not. totally, <laughs> Prince Charles was totally in command of that situation. She was a 19-year-old girl uh, and very innocent at that time, totally innocent. It was all, that's absolute claptrap. Okay, Lady Colin Campbell, what do you disagree with as far as Nicholas's book is concerned? Well, 
I'm not surprised that he said what he just said because uh, Nicholas, is Dave, Nicholas Davis's one source of information was Humphrey Muse. Humphrey Muse, who I happen to know, uh, used to work in the same company that he was dismissed from. Uh, and Humphrey Muse also happened for a short while to be the assistant private secretary to the Prince of Wales. So he has information about, say, the 18-month, two-year period that Humphrey was working in the palace. He has no information before and no information since. Good. Andrew? Uh, and, no, can I just say, Shirley? finish? And the fact of the matter is that I was told how the Princess of Wales bagged the Prince of Wales by people who were there <laughs> on the spot at the time and people who she spoke to, including friends of hers. Does bagged mean in American ease? Oh, enticed, enticed. Enticed and trapped yeah. into marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Andrew Morton, what disagreements do you have on any kind of a scale with the other two authors? Well, first of all, I would like to say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and these two people are, are trying to imitate this book, but failing dismally. Um, I hope we're is, not. I, I, well, here and, we have... And you cannot call imitation <laughs> a sincere form of flattery when <laughs> my book came out before well, yours. It's, it's, Normally, when you imitate, you imitate something that exists. exists. Here we have three extremely friendly English <laughs> authors. <laughs> now, I'm going so, to well, try... Sorry, Sally, I would like to, I would like to finish the point. I've never yes. heard of imitation I, I, after I, I, the I would like to... Uh, uh, Sally, if I, if I may finish the point. As far as Colin Campbell's book is concerned, uh, it's been deeply hurtful to the Princess of Wales because it's, very, it's a very nasty little tome. It's not, it's as far, truthful, as far as rather Nick, than which as far yours is Nick Davis's book is concerned, mm -hmm. he is the kind of character who makes Walter Mitty seem like a man of integrity. He was exposed last year as a liar on the front page of the various newspapers. So it's, it's rather unfortunate that, I, that I'm in bed with these two people who, um, uh, who are uh, spreading this kind of calumny against the Princess of Wales. I now, think you if have I can hold, now meet James Whitaker. He is also via satellite right now. He's sitting in London, and he is a gossip columnist with the London Daily Mirror. He has been a royal watcher for more than 25 years. James, bring us up to date. What is the latest gossip going on in England with Diana and Charles? Well, it's, it's looking pretty dodgy at the moment, I have to say. I think I'm being led towards the fact that there could well be an official separation between the two before too long, but I cannot accept, maybe I don't want to, but I can't that there's going to be a divorce. I think too much is at stake, and I think they're both sensible enough to accept this. Now, someone was dismissed, were they not? Who was dismissed recently? Her, oh, sorry. Her monsieur. Her the monsieur. monsieur. The, the monsieur. Monsieurs. Yes. Her monsieur. Oh, Stephen Trigger we talked yes, about. Yes, I think so, yeah. yeah. Nope. The, the therapist masseur. Yes, well, I think he actually was quite badly treated on it. I don't think it's as straightforward as it appeared. He did, in fact, appear to give a very big interview with one of the Sunday newspapers, but my information is he did not know that it was going to go into a newspaper, and he was actually quite badly turned over on that situation. But indeed, he is no longer welcome at Kensington Palace to treat the princess in any way, and he received a phone call from Diana's private secretary, Patrick, Jefferson just over a week ago telling him of this. Uh, can I say he's actually wrong? Uh, <laughs> Who is me or he's Stephen wrong, Twigg? He's wrong. Uh, Stephen Twigg sold a story to the Sunday Express for £15,000. That's 30,000 American dollars. Uh, approximately. Yeah. About no, 20, no, 28,000. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he sold the story and that's why he was dismissed. You know, the problem with these supposed royal watchers, as these uh, gentlemen, I will be polite and call them gentlemen, in, in English terms, they are like national inquirer reporters. And you know, they sort of scavenge around on the is periphery. This, is you this lady Colin them, Campbell speaking? Yes, it is. If ah, you ever I, see them, morning, I haven't dear. finished. Oh, I'm just saying good morning, it, Lady oh, Colin. It's a normal English civility. Oh, oh I didn't hear you. I thought you... Oh, good oh morning. maybe you don't understand those things. Well... <laughs> Say good morning. That's what your mummy taught you. No, well, my mother taught me actually not to speak to rabble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Now, you know, they are, they, they are, these people sort of stand out. If you, if you say go to a ball, uh, 
if a member of the royal family is present, it's always close to the general press and the general public. They have things that they call rota photographers and reporters who are accredited by the palace, and it's a handful. And they stand outside like, you know, fans in the 1950s behind crush barriers. And they click their cameras and they chat amongst each other. And this is what they call information. I mean, they're never allowed inside. You never see them inside. You know, it's a joke. And no wonder they always come up with nonsense. I like to know that if all of your books are supposed to be good, um, why, and you got them from good sources, why are all three different? But they're not all good and they're not all, so they're not all know? authentic. Is this just a money it's, scam? Do mm. you write these books for the money? Well, I, I, I decided to do my book in 1984, was the first decision I took, and actually got round to doing it in 1988, because I thought she was a really interesting character. That's the reason I did it. Question. Lady Campbell, I want to know what makes your source so authoritative? Well, Where do you first, get your source from? Okay, first of all, I am genuinely connected to the royal family through marriage. I also have, Lady uh, Colin, uh, I also have a cousin. Sorry? This what were you laughable. saying? Laughable. How are you even vaguely connected with them? Well, if, if you, you crawled up behind the Princess oh. of Wales and bit her on the bum, she wouldn't know who you were. Well, I am delighted. I am delighted to hear you ask that question so that you have an opportunity to once more display your ignorance because my husband, Lord Colin Campbell, is the son of the 11th Duke of Argyll and the wife of the 9th Duke of Argyll was Her Royal Highness the Princess Louise, Duchess of Argyle. And you don't have to take my word for it. Scurry to one of your little reference books and read it. Now, How long were you I'm married, saying, may I ask? Uh, I also, so how long were you married, Lady Colin? I'm not prepared to go into how long I was married or how long I wasn't. As you know, I am suing you for libel over lies you told about me in connection with my personal life. What and I do not intend to get into it. all of I do not intend tell us to get into all of it. Tell us about your personal life. Uh, <laughs> yes, to answer this young lady's question, uh, so I am friendly with go on tell us about your I, private I, I life james james be good <laughs> why, james, Nicholas. why don't you scurry back to the lavatory where you crawled out of <laughs> <laughs> and now you've got to be yes. good as well stop this squabbling I, I, okay <laughs> everybody stop squabbling i want to ask the three of you if it's all i it's want full. to hear about lady collins private life no, i'm not interested uh, if you say these are all false statements, why doesn't the royal company, uh, uh, family sue you for a rough libel? Well, they can't sue me because everything I've said is absolutely That's true. That's what I don't understand. And, and well, let me ask a question. Uh, Nicholas, yes. does the royal family ever sue anybody, no matter how bad or how fallacious the story is? It has never sued anyone in the There's United Kingdom. They have so now all we Americans need to know is yeah, that they that's have, just... They have not sued because it would mean they would have to go into a court of law and they would have to give evidence. Okay. Well, wait. We, it, we, it's not and would it be better, it's their way. Correct. And you that know. is why you have rubbish well, like the Morton My question is, book. why do you take the time to write on peace, people's personal lives? If anyone here was having a divorce, would you write on it? No, they marry, they love each other, they live together. Every relationship has its good and bad points. What is the significance? Why does the whole world have to know what's going on in their family life. I think the world wants to know, right. don't they? Yeah, madam, yes. the, re the yes. reason is that these people are in the public domain. They are part of the royal family. Everyone pays taxes uh, towards their upkeep. And therefore, the, the public do have a right to know what's going on. Let's get back to... Particularly when it's about the heir to the throne. Let's get back to bulimia. I'm going to ask each one of the four of you for some kind of information or statement as to is she bulimic? Do you think so? How does it affect her? Let's start with you, Nicholas. Well, from what I understand, from the, from the very start, uh, when she was, uh, was uh, engaged to Charles, the powers that be said to her, you have got to lose weight. 
Here was this girl who was perfectly happy uh, over nine stone, uh, and the people at Vogue, to start with, said, you've got to lose weight, you're carrying far too much weight, you can't get married, you can't have a wedding, looking like that. That's where it all started for they, her. They asked her to lose weight. Absolutely, yeah. And she went along with it. Here was a 19-year-old girl, inexperienced. She went along with it. As a result of that, what I do fear, what I do believe, is that um, she has since always had problems with her diet and with her weight. And occasionally, yes, she probably has suffered from anorexia nervosa. She probably has suffered from bulimia occasionally. But I must say this, if she was in such dire straits, as, as uh, Morton suggests in his book, if she was in such dire straits, then there would, she would not have looked so tremendous in all the photographs that have been taken of that particular woman over the last nine years. You cannot be that ill for nine years and still look such so damn good as she does in her photographs. Now, Andrew said it started on the honeymoon. Do you want to elaborate on that, Andrew? Yes, indeed. First of all, bulimia nervosa is a sister disease to anorexia nervosa. Correct. It's a disease, basically, which is seated in childhood and an unhappy childhood. And as we all know, the Princess of Wales lost her parents through a, a very messy and acrimonious divorce when she was about six years old. Now, it was triggered in her, in her adult life by the instability initially in her marriage. And by it was just one very small incident, Prince Charles put his arms round uh, his, his wife and said, you're getting a bit chubby now, aren't you, dear? And that triggered off something very deep in, in her psyche. And from then on, she was being sick four or five times a day, and also indulging in, in food bingers, which means that she was raiding the fridge at Windsor Castle, at Highgrove, and at Kensington Palace. Now, she suffered from that for a number of years. And because of the nature of bulimia, it's a disease which exists by disguise. So you think that you're, you give the impression of being very happy and, a very, and, very, and smiling for the public, but inside there's rage, there's despair, and there's anger. And this is a, a, a well-known psychological uh, uh, symptom. In the, late 1980s, in the late 1980s, her best friend, Caroline Bartholomew, who was so alarmed by the mood swings caused by the illness, by the lack of vitamins and, and so on, that she insisted that she went to see a specialist, a, a chap called Maurice Lipsidge, who was within are you, six are months... Are you saying that it was so recover, bad? Uh, are you saying it was so bad beforehand that she wouldn't have s sought any advice? Well, what I am saying is that she went to see a couple of people as well, a chap <laughs> called David Mitchell, a, a doctor called Dr. Alan McGlashan. She didn't get on with them. They didn't, weren't able to do an awful lot for her. Oh, can I say now, that my sources say that her eating habits, and it's all in my book, are... Uh, well, Lady Colin Campbell, Matt, Matt, your Matt. sources includes James Whitaker, who you've just said comes out of a toilet. Your other source, <laughs> one, one of your other sources, includes a chap called Rupert Fairfax, a former assistant private secretary to the Prince of Wales, who has asked me uh, to make clear on this programme that he never spoke to you and that what you've said in relation to him is, a, 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 in relation to many of the things that you've said, absolute nonsense. That's absolutely not so. That's absolutely not so. However, of course, you, you do come out with the most extravagant claims. Can I and go back the latest. to Can I go bulimia? back to the bulimia? Yes, I'd like yeah, to is, can, I, can I which just is, talk is, about the no. anorexia? Yes. Yes. Can, yes. Because I actually wrote about this disease in November 1982, and I was told by a member of the princess's family that they were extremely concerned she was becoming anorexic. So I really can confirm that that has been in existence for very nearly 10 years now. And of course there was some sort of treatment done, but they didn't really get to grips with it properly, and it was allowed to drift on which she, did, from time to time, cause terrible problems. She refused to get treatment, which is quite standard with bulimics. She's, her eating problems started at school. Her schoolmates told me that she used to gorge herself and have four, five, Give and six helpings of breakfast. Give me some of these names of these schoolmates, Then hold on, Lady let me Colin. finish, let me finish, please. Give me a name or two, let instead of finish. a vague generalization. Let, let me finish. Uh, and Go on, give me will, a name. Will you shut up, you little worm? <laughs> <laughs> and, and when she was... And, and a member of the royal name. household told me that when she was... that she went into the bathroom, by, uh, into, into her suite of rooms, and the door was open, and she saw her being sick 
in the lavatory. This was just after the engagement. And she had already said to this member of the royal household that uh, she hated how she looked in her engagement photographs because she looked so fat. And she said to this member of the royal household, uh, she said, I have discovered a great way of dieting. It's not true that the royal family tried to get her to slim. They did not. They did not. She did it of her own free will. Okay. I agree with you, Lady Finally! Yeah. Take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Kelly LeBrock reveals the essence of man. It's in the way he walks, the way he smiles, and when he holds you close, it's in the way he smells. Brute, the essence of man. Come on, put it on. America, if you want chicken tonight, simmer sauces from Ragu, please tell us. I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Try our two new flavors, Spanish chicken and creamy chicken primavera. Just brown, simmer, and serve. I feel like chicken tonight. Here's important news for anyone who suffers from nail fungus. It's Fungi Nail, the answer to nail fungus problems, like thick, ugly nails, split nails, discolored nails, even problems caused by artificial nails. Fungi Nail is safe and effective. It fights fungus on both fingernails and toenails. Fungi Nail is easy to apply and easy to buy because no prescription is necessary. So say hello to Fungi Nail and goodbye to nail fungus. Get Fungi Nail today. My job is to drive this race car, fast. At the speeds I travel, I can't afford to wear glasses that slide down my nose. I go to Lens Crafters because they have so many ways to make glasses fit better, like silicone nose pads that keep my glasses from slipping, and their exclusive feather weights are the lightest glasses I've ever worn. As a race car driver, my life depends on the choices I make. That's why for a perfect fit, I choose Lens Crafters. Better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. A message from Sweeney, Pfeiffer, and Blackburn. When you've been seriously injured, you need prompt medical attention and the prayers and good wishes of family and friends. You may also need sound legal advice. I'm Charles Sweeney of Sweeney, Piper, and Blackburn. We'll tell you what you need to know to protect your legal rights. Remember, we don't get paid unless we make a recovery for you. Call now for a free office visit. Sweeney, Piper, and Blackburn, attorneys for injured people. Monday, Maury Povich has a special one-hour show that will make you think twice. I'm very supportive of lesbian couples. It's an honest discussion with honest answers. And I say, gee, let's go back to my place. And you say, thank you very much, but I'm really not interested. It's what you always wanted to know. Did you used to date guys? Yes, sure. It's all about being gay in the 90s. Women loving women on the next Maury Povich show. Monday at 11 on 21 Alive. These parents were thrown in jail after leaving their 11-year-old daughter on the side of a highway. It was a mistake. It shouldn't have happened. But the child said she narrowly escaped a family suicide pact. One story led to another. It got totally embellished. It simply was not the truth. Now he faces 10 years in prison, saying my daughter's lies put me behind bars. The fact is that you left your kid out on the street. Next Sally. I'm saying this for your benefit. What we have here now is an American audience of about 200 people with a standing microphone. They are lined up in front of the microphone. Since this is only a one-way satellite, you can't see that. These people are going to ask all of you or any one of you a question, and I'm going to ask that you give them as succinct an answer view, uh, geared to the American market as you possibly can. Go ahead, sir. Yes, um, I understand Lady Di tried to commit suicide with a lemon peeler. I can't, I can't understand that. A lemon peeler? 
Uh, Andrew, it was your suggestion. Uh, what, how do you commit yes. suicide with a lemon peeler? Uh, well, as, as I made clear at the start, it was a lemon slicer, and it was at Kensington Palace, and it was not a deliberate attempt to take her own life. It was just a desperate cry for help, where she was uh, scoring herself with, a, with, this, with this lemon peeler. You mean it was a tantrum? It was a tantrum. But why didn't you say it was a tantrum? Okay. Why did it something it wasn't not an attempt to suicide. suicide. I stand by this, that it was a desperate cry for help. And also, but you said it was a suicide in, attempt. And also, in psychological terms, the flip side of bulimia nervosa is called the cutting syndrome, where you want to cut yourself because but you have such But that is not a suicide Mr. Morton, attempt. Mr. Morton, she has never had a scar on her body. She has never had a bandage, ever. And of course, you would I, know, Lady Collins. Yes, I would know. I you would obviously know. don't. Rather more than you do. Why don't you maybe get some new glasses? Then you'll start to see. <laughs> OK, next question from the audience. Well, I come from Wales, and uh, we love the prince, and we love Diana, and she's very good with children, she's very good with older people, and I was talking to Britain last night to three different people, relatives and friends, and they said they don't want, they don't believe there's going to be a divorce at all, that she'll, uh, she, they'll work something out between them. Okay. Well, madam, I, yes, I would like to say I, that I, I don't think there will one. be a divorce either. No. I, I believe they have had an arrangement, a separation, uh, which I've written about for the last four years, in which basically Diana lives in Kensington Palace and Charles lives at Highgrove, to a great degree. And they've been living like that for the last four years, and there is no real reason why they shouldn't continue to live like what, that. What is the official religion of Charles and Di? Church of England. That is what we would call Episcopal? No, 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 you'd call Protestant. It is Episcopal. Church no, of England, Episcopal. is it not American Episcopal? No, it's Protestant. Protestant? Yes. Okay, why can't they get divorced and he still remain king? Because uh, he Henry VIII... They can. They can. They, they, can. they can. Get, they can separate, they can get divorced, and he can still ascend to the throne. They can get they divorced. Can. Indeed. No. Okay, go ahead. Um, as a fellow, one of my citizens I mentioned earlier, uh, the per about personal lives, since uh, for a couple of centuries now, Britain has been run by uh, the Parliament, the House of Lords and the House of Commons. True. And in the past couple of centuries, why don't you just read out the, um, the quote-unquote monarchy so this way the citizens don't have to worry about paying taxes, so this way you don't have to waste time printing all about their personal life. Well, the answer to you there is that because only about 15% of people at the very most want a, a republicanism in, in Britain. They like the monarchy. 85% want to retain the monarchy. If they want to retain the monarchy, Britain should be allowed to do so. Yes, it's their country. Go ahead. Two quick questions. One, do all Brits take lessons in diplomacy from the House of Commons? Because that's been in evidence today. Secondly, I want to ask, uh, do you all consider the effects of your writings on the British attitude toward the monarchy? I, I have friends there, and I know some of them are very much, let's get rid of the Queen. It costs too much. We don't need her. But What's the effect of your okay, books? Do you think about very it? proud of our House of Commons, point one, because that is good fun, and the House of Commons has been li existing like that for the last 250 years, uh, we're also very proud of our monarchy. And although th it, they may uh, cost the taxpayer some money, do remember that the monarchy bring in millions of pounds each and every year from wonderful tourists like the people of America who come over to Britain to have a look at Buckingham Palace and check out our mon monarchy. Do they make more than they spend and than it costs to keep them? Yes, much far more. more. Far, far more. more. So far you spend more, more having them no, there that we visit. But also, can I answer Correct. his question? His question was Surely. addressed to us as writers, and I certainly was uh, very aware of the fact that it was my responsibility to convey the truth and to do it responsibly. And I actually got on television in March and April while Morton was still compiling his dossier of fantasy. And I, and I said that I had no doubt that a less responsible writer than I would eventually go with the suicide stories because if they'd been leaked to me, they'd be leaked to other people. And that he would present them as the truth if he was not scrupulous because of the obvious commercial advantages and not caring about the damage this would do to the Prince of Wales and to the monarchy. And of course, no sooner do I say it than up pops this jack-in-the-box, uh, chatting a whole heap of claptrap. Okay, let us get, uh, just to introduce another topic, I want to get to Camilla Parker, 
and to the idea of infidelity. Number one, Nicholas, will you explain to the American public who Camilla Bowles Parker is, or is it Parker Bowles? It's Parker Bowles to Thank start you. with. Camilla Parker Bowles is a young lady who, uh, now not a young lady, she's the same age as Prince Charles. Which is? Uh, 42 today. 43. And um, they met when they were 23 years of age. Um, and they certainly got on extremely well at that time. But Charles was not thinking in any way of settling down or getting married. He then went off to sea for four years. During that time, she met and married uh, Parker Bowles, Andrew Parker Bowles. Um, now, very importantly, when Earl Mountbatten was shot uh, and killed by the IRA in August 1979, the one person that Charles turned to at that time was Camilla. He was desperate, uh, he was desperate, he was very sad, he was very angry, and Camilla helped him over the, the next six months to come to terms with what had happened. But she's married to an older man and he's not. Correct. So he could never marry her, she was already married. Now what's happening, Nicholas, quickly in their relationship? They right. seem to always be together, this married Correct. woman. Now what has happened is since the, 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 the breakdown in the marriage of Diana and Charles, which really did take place seriously from about 85, 86, Charles and Camilla spend a great deal of time with each other. They live very close together in Gloucestershire, and they're extremely good friends, if not more than that. Now, uh, Andrew, explain about the bracelet. Yes, uh, Camilla has, has really cast a long shadow over the, the courtship and the marriage of, of uh, Princess Diana and, and Prince Charles. And shortly before the wedding, Diana opened a package at Buckingham Palace. It contained a bracelet with their initials, with initials F and G, Fred and Gladys, a nickname that Prince Charles and Camilla share together. It was also, Diana knew about this because earlier that year Camilla, Camilla had been ill and uh, he'd sent her a bouquet of flowers. Diana was understandably very annoyed about it and was almost at the point of calling the whole wedding off. And she spoke to her sisters about it, Jane and Sarah, at Buckingham Palace at a lunch, at the same time that Prince Charles went off to see his friend Camilla. And they said to her, too late Dutch, which is their family nickname for her, your face is on the tea towels now, so it's too late to chicken out. So when Diana walked down the aisle at St Paul's Cathedral, she was very emotionally confused. On the one hand was her love for Prince Charles, on the other was this nagging suspicion about his continuing relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Now, if that were true, it would be a wonderful story, but it's not. Now, I have known Camilla Parker Bowles' brother, Mark Shand, for 20 years. That's the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is no member of the aristocracy would ever wear a bracelet that had F and G. It is common, it is vulgar, it is like ankle bracelets. You just don't do things like this. If Mr. Morton knew anything about the world he writes about, which he obviously doesn't, he would know this. It is absolute nonsense. The whole story, I'm not saying that he might not have been fed the story, but if he had deductive powers and if he studied the world that he's writing about, which I think is the responsibility of any writer, he would know that it is not true. One of our uh, authors said that when she hits the redial button on his phone, it's Camilla's phone that answers. When we come back, a woman who is convinced that Diana and Charles are headed for a divorce. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stop what you're doing and watch this announcement. Are you serious about getting into shape? Not just going through the motions, but really serious about getting into shape, losing some weight or tightening up those soft spots. Both American Health and Fitness Centers of Fort Wayne are so sure they can do just that for you. They're making this special 30-second anniversary offer. The first 10 callers, 18 and over, will receive a two-year gift membership. Receive two full years of the latest state-of-the-art equipment, swimming pool, sauna, and more. Call now. What have you got to lose? A two-year membership is yours if you are one of the first 10 callers. This offer will end soon. Competition says we can't, $100 says we can. Allen County Motors will beat any deal on a new Ford car or truck or we'll pay you $100. Bring us your best deal on any new Ford car or truck. If we can't beat it, Allen County Motors will pay you $100 cash. We're number one in customer satisfaction. Our huge inventory and low prices prove it. Bring your best deal to Allen County Motors today. Remember, if you don't have our price, you'll pay too much. $100 guarantees it.
These people face the 90s in fear. Homosexuals have been devastated by the rampant spread of AIDS. But now doctors say heterosexual women have even more reason to practice safe sex or abstinence. Hello, I'm Victor Locke. Monday on Liveline, we take your calls about AIDS. A major international conference on the disease has concluded, and startling news about new strains and its victims has come out from that conference. You can call us at noon to hear the latest on AIDS and what you can do to prevent its spread. That's at noon on Liveline. Accommodations for guests of the Sally Jesse Raphael Show were provided by the new luxury Ramada Renaissance Times Square Hotel at 48th Street and 7th Avenue, New York City. We are back talking about Princess Diana and Prince Charles and what will become of their marriage. Meet Louise Lagou. She is the associate editor of People Magazine, uh, and the royals are her beat. Now, you saw us all sitting here reading People Magazine. Louise, why do we Americans care? Why are we so intrigued, and why did your magazine sell so many copies? Well, we don't, we don't like to think about this, but 200 and some years ago we fought a war so as not to have royals anymore, and now we consider them still part of our heritage and we absolutely adore them, and they, they are celebrities, and there's a Cinderella factor, and there's this other idea, you know, how many of us would like to be 5'10", blonde, size 4, have nannies all day and all night, and, and still she's not happy, so there's a kind of idea that a lot of us are happier than, than she is. Does that make us feel better? Yes, it does. It makes us feel better about our own lives. Is the worse it gets over there, the better we feel? No, we don't wish her ill, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was trying to oh. psych it all out. We want her to look great and have beautiful clothes. All right, do you think they're going to get divorced? I think they could. Now, it's a very American point of view to say, if you're unhappy, dump the guy. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying it could happen because, you know, I've been listening to this, and I love every minute of it, but to me it almost doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. I think there's exaggeration. I think there's truth in everything that's being said. What matters is this has gone too far. These people are slugging this out in public. How would they ever get back together and be happy? They could split up. He could step out of the line of succession. The queen has vowed to reign until she dies, which, looking at her gene pattern, will be another 25 years. <laughs> Prince Wills is now 10. He can step in at the age of 35, and everything will be fine. My Except solution. the man has been brought up to be a king, and he never got to play the part. It's like rehearsing for a long time. He can be an activist. He can be another Mountbatten, his idol. He can, be, uh, he can agitate on behalf of the environment and education, and he can do more of that as a private citizen. Can they as a ever prince. remarry anyone else? Can, does, does she have a boyfriend? Uh, that, that is uh, Nicholas's department, I Nicholas, think. Nicholas, does, <laughs> does Princess Di have a hidden boyfriend? Or uh, not? A hidden boyfriend? No, she's got many friends that she goes out with. No, and no, and no. Me most of them, most of them are, are A, uh, girls of her own age, or young men, usually young, handsome men, usually young, handsome, single men <laughs> that she certainly goes out with and sees a great deal of. Lady Colin Campbell, does she have a boyfriend? Well, American if ease. you read my book, you will see that I list four confidants who she has had. She has the equivalent of Camilla. She has her own Camilla. Well, now, all of you English are using words like friend and confidant. Let's get to America, where we use lover, boyfriend. <laughs> we'll take a break, and we'll work that out. If you've been hurt in an accident, you need a lawyer. A lawyer who will fight for your rights. A lawyer who knows how to take on the insurance companies. Call our law offices at 426-3000. We don't get paid until you get paid. Call 426-3000 for a free office visit. It pays to know your rights. Call 426-3000. We help injured people. We can help you. How do you make a delicious homemade meal in minutes? Eckridge it. With Eckridge Smoked Sausage. Cause you can sausage, you can cheese it, you can even pork and beans it. 
it's pre-cooked. So for a delicious homemade meal in minutes... Everest Fix! To make a sandwich with cold cuts that aren't made with shortcuts... Everest Fix! With Eckridge Cold Cuts, like our great tasting ham. Always delicious, always lean, always 98% fat free. If your carpet takes a lot of abuse, you should call Stanley Steamer right now. Because nobody cleans your carpet like we do. Stanley Steamer has an exclusive deep steam cleaning system that gets way down into your carpet and gets out the toughest ground in dirt. Stanley Steamer. When we say we clean it, we mean it. Call now for our current specials. She got the bail, she got the dress, she got the flowers and all the rest. She got the church, she got the room, she got down the aisle and lost the groom. An hour before, he canceled. Did you actually propose to her? I did propose to her, yes. <laughs> A pretty dress. Oh, oh, no. The tabloids are gonna love me in this. <laughs> Dumped at the altar on the next Oprah. Oprah's on Monday at four, right here on Twenty One Alive. Are you discriminated against because you have a fat child? Call me. Tell me about it. James, I'm going to ask yes. you then. Does she have a lover? Princess Di. No, she does not. She gets her rocks off from the adoration she gets from her public. She, I think it's a complete sex substitute for her. I don't think she needs it. She's one of these not women totally, who James. looks absolutely terrific. But if you put a finger on her, I think anybody would be in major trouble. And I don't think there's any, any boyfriend in her life, in the sense that you're talking about, which is a lover. Uh, Nicholas? Uh, I, I can't agree with James, I'm afraid, despite the fact he's wonderful. Um, the, reason, the reason being is, is, as any woman would know, a, a young woman does not look as great, tremendous, wonderful as Diana looks all the time if there was no man in her life. No, but the, the, the substitute, Nick, is, is that public. You hear a buzz among the Americans. Quick question. <laughs> Um, as far as this ordeal goes with Princess Di killing herself over Charles, she really does not have to kill herself over Charles because she could do much better than him. And she also, he should be thankful that he has a wife that takes care of his children and his wife because the way people separate today, you'd be thankful when you have a loyal wife. Sheer force a child's foot exerts upon opposing surfaces can be, well, different from an adult's. Stride Right understands that difference and designs shoes with quality, durability, and a special plus for back to school. A plus values. Smartly priced shoes and sneakers from just $25 to $35. A plus values in Stride Right. Every step of the way. For the itch and pain of bug bites and allergic rashes, even the new stronger hydrocortisones can't give you the kind of relief you get from Benadryl Maximum Strength Cream because it stops the pain and blocks the itch. Benadryl Maximum Strength Cream or spray. Replens replenishes vaginal moisture. Replens lasts for days. Replens feels so natural. Recommended by gynecologists. Discover Replens, vaginal moisture that lasts. So you think getting older is boring, eh? Think again. It never gets old. Louise, do we care as much about the royalty of Monaco uh, as we do about the British? Well, our, our sales say no. Uh, just according to how many Monaco covers we sell versus how many British we sell. I, I don't think we feel the same heritage thing, and I don't think we think they're real royals. And I think Princess Grace is part of that. You know, we were all delighted, uh, those, you know, people old enough to remember when she married in. But then after that, well, they're not real royals anymore because they're half American. Aha! Okay. Uh... James, you have a final statement. What would you like to say? I do. If you're going to buy one of these three books, you really ought to put your dollars onto the Morton one because it is as good as the controversy that you have read about is, and it's, that's for a good reason. 
really. I, you know, I have read all three, and one of them is outstanding. The others I, are let me not say, that bad, but okay. they're not very good either. Let me say this. In America, when we build a, a mall or a shopping center, we put three large department stores uh, on either end. I've read all three books and think they're all fascinating and suggest that the American public go out and buy them, and all three of you will get very, very rich, and then you'll stop squabbling. <laughs> Gordon, right? Yes. Have you ever worked with anything high-tech? No. No. Thank you for the resume. But we're looking for someone with... More education. Some experience. Good luck to you. Call ITT Technical Institute for a copy of 10 Things You Should Know About Today's Job Market. 1-800-942-0099. Call now. The John Deere Summer Clearance Sale is on now at Mutton Power Equipment. Trade up to a new John Deere now and take advantage of factory rebates through August 31st. I'm Jim Mutton. You can buy this affordable John Deere Rider for only $8.99. Or this suburban tractor, Mutton Christ, at $13.99. At Mutton's, we're big, but not too big. We've got a big inventory, a huge parts and service department, and we'll make your money count for more. Mutton Power Equipment. Mutton Power Equipment. Mutton Power Equipment. On the next Entertainment Tonight, he calls himself Fabio. So why are some women calling him a bimbo? A bimbo is somebody who's gorgeous and overbuilt who gets by on their look. That's Fabio. He's made his living as a romance novel cover model, and he's easily the hottest hunk in the business. But now they're going to pay him big, big bucks to write, and the hunk bashing is on. Get the inside story on the next Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, weeknights at 6.30 on 21 Live. Take drugs to a party, a going away party, during National Night Out, August 4th. It's easy to show your support. Simply turn on your headlights whenever you drive around town during the day. Then that evening, turn on your outside lights, lock your door, and meet with your neighbors, and show your commitment to driving drugs out of our lives. You can also visit the Crime Prevention Bureau, the Fort Wayne Fire Department, or the Project Garden site during their open house sessions. Help us rid our neighborhoods of crime and drugs on National Night Out, August 4th. Okay, here's the deal. For the price of a bathing suit, about $58 discount, you buy uh, Nicholas Davis, Diana, hold that for me. Diana in private, Lady Colin Campbell's book, and Diana, her true story, Andrew Morton's book. And then we'll have a spot of tea and a good tan, and we'll know everything we need to know. <laughs> See you next time. Some members of our audience will receive, and a promotional fee has been provided by... Did you worry about perming your hair? Not with new Lilt for total condition. With conditioners built in every step of the way. It's the worry-free perm. Look at me eating peanut brittle. Even with my dentures, thanks to Super Polygrip. Hold your dentures ultra tight with Super Polygrip. Jonelle presents salon style sculptured nails. Easy to apply, just stick it, buff it, gel it, set it. You'll love it. Gel nails from Jonelle. Caffrey decaffeinates your smile. Caffrey toothpaste helps keep coffee and tea stains from staining your smile like they stain your cup. Caffrey decaffeinates your smile. <laughs> Deadbolt. I just smashed the door in. I, I could pick most locks with the credit card. I know when you're home and when you're not. This is the ADT SafeWatch Plus home security system. They were asleep. They didn't even know we was in the house. It links your home to an ADT monitoring center.